waiting for it to heat up. There it goes. Hey guys, Tactical Oyster here, bringing you guys episode 11 of 3-Bar Exploits. Um, it's it's 2-11, we're supposed to start at 2-10, so we're running a little bit late. But hopefully you don't mind, because it's going to be up on Tuesday anyways. Uh, we have Whackmed and Bonfire, <laughs> bonfire here as always. Heyo! Hey, what's up, guys? guys? And we, ha we have a, a guest, Mr. Punkman, if you'd like to talk about yourself and your channel a little bit. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, my name is Mr. Punkman87, and I uh, just want to say thanks for having me on your week's episode this time. And uh, I'm also a YouTube channel commentator. Um, I represent the PS3 currently, and I play Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, Let's Plays like The Last of Us, Doom, whatever you know, whatever interests me, I'll put on my channel. But pretty much, I'm just another gamer just like everyone else here. So thanks for having me, guys. Cool. Hey, right, I got a question you. before we move on any further. Do you have a mohawk? Like an I used mohawk. to, man. I used to. I used to have actually in high school. Um, they're called Liberty Spikes. And they were, used to be uh, out to yeah. here, and they were like just like like grass green, dude, dark green. I had it for a couple months. My parents were cool with it. So, uh, but now I'm I'm older, so I got to mature out a little bit. So, <laughs> understandable for sure. Yeah. All right. Do we want. Wanna... Could you picture Whackman with Liberty Spikes right now? No. I don't actually know what Liberty Spikes are. Just imagine big giant spikes coming yeah, out just, of your head that are yeah, just dark green. Yeah, like all over the place, all, dude. All over or just in the Mohawk line? No, no all, all over. over. Think of like an mm -hmm. afro made out of spikes. Just, or think about a, almost any anime movie. All those no, Japanese no. animes? <laughs> That's... No? No. Wack, we all, Wack Man only plays Call of Duty and he only well, watches American action films. Well, I had green hair for films. a while, so... <laughs> So. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we want to go. Oh yeah, let's go and shout out Strictly Business. Um, check out strictlybusiness.com at SB Gaming on Twitter. <laughs> and Whackman just typed something funny in the chat. That's why I'm laughing. But yeah, check out Strictly Business. Um, and tell them that we sent the, sent you. So now we want to one more thing before we get into actual topics. Um, in order to make sure that you guys get to see the content you want to see on the show, we're going to tell you what topics we're talking about this week. And if you want to only listen to one of those particular topics as opposed to all of them or whatever. And yes, I'm sniffing my marker. Get over it in the chat there. But if you only want to see a particular uh, topic, then we're going to timestamp each topic in the description. So if we say we're going to talk about consoles, for example, and you say, oh, I want to hear them talk about consoles, just go to the description and you can skip to that part specifically. But anyways, uh, who mm -hmm. wants to introduce the topics? So uh, first we have, well, we have the introductions. And uh, no, it doesn't fit. first... Well, that was what we, yeah, prison talk and console updates and console events. Uh, there will be a random question after the console news uh, that that I have come up with that no one actually knows at this point. Um, nope. Call of Duty multiplayer, uh, the reveal is coming out. We're going to discuss that a little bit. Some of the gun repeats and some of the other things that are repeated, as well as new stuff that may or may not be in Call of Duty Ghosts. Uh, and then NV. At Gfinity, and then how they did in Atlanta, and just a lot of Call of Duty stuff. So how they will do in Atlanta. And then if there's there's always weird stuff that comes up in the middle of the show, so check the timestamp down below. Yes, but first we have prison talk. Prison talk, everybody's prison favorite. Talk. Everybody's I'm kind of scared favorite. about this topic, guys. So, so uh, we'll see what you should be. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna prison talk blue. Start looking for new, uh, for, for, for more input whenever I'm doing prison talk for my other co host to get them a little more involved, even though neither one of them has spent very much time in prison. Um, and it won't be as gross as it, it was last week. I'm just, dude, I'm just leaving it, leaving it there. Uh, all right, fair enough. Um, this week is uh, cheating in card games, and this may not sound like a very big deal, but when you're in prison, there's not so much to do. And I learned how to play spades while I worked in jail. And this is this is a card game like you have, may have never played. If you've only played cards at your mom's table or at your grandmother's table, you've never played cards like You <clears throat> probably have never played cards like this. Grown men standing on the bench, spinning in the air, jump like they're trying to dunk a basketball, Super slamming head. down cards to, to knock a spade or to, to play a spade to take a book. And... It is the most terrific thing to watch a group of people play spades whenever there's whatever contraband that you don't actually know that's it, on the line. Yeah. It's it's really interesting. Jump up and spin around, slam it down. 
just as interesting is that I think most of the fight, at least half of the fights that I witnessed were over card games. And it's because, you, you know, that no, no honor among thieves, it's, it's kind of like, well, that doesn't make any sense anyway. But when you're, when you're in jail, for whatever reason that, that landed you here, you may be a professional liar and just got caught or whatever, and you're in jail. You must be honest in your card gaming and and in whatever gambling situation there is because there are the most real world consequences when you're in the fish tank. So it's it's really cool to see. I'm jump up, spin around, slam it down, and you have never heard a card slam so loud. One inch thick bulletproof glass, a vestibule, another one inch thick bulletproof glass slams down on a on a stainless steel table and a pl- a, a little a little regular deck of playing card. One card, you can hear it through all of that. It's pretty, it's pretty outstanding wow. how into card games they get. So, it sounds kind of like the people who play Call of Duty and they like move their control. They're like moving their controller around as they move and stuff. It sounds like that conceptually. I'm not one of those people, but I know some people who are. My mom used to play like that. So, moral of the story: If you go to jail, you play cards. Be real. Don't cheat. Be, be real. real Just don't cheat. Question. Yes. Why do you have a marker on your head? I may want to sniff it. I put my marker down. (laughs) I tried putting it on my ear, like like people who have a pen on their ear, but it doesn't really fit. Like it'll fall out. Just I just had to ask. I wasn't sure if you were getting in on the sniffing action too. Do they? uh, You're gonna like draw stuff on your head or something. Do they still play dominoes in prison or no? If you want to see me draw something on my head for the next three bar exploits, please leave it in the chat down below and we'll put it there. I will advertise your product if you if you're gonna pay. Other than that, we'll just do a name. Hey Wackman, do they still play uh, dominoes in prison, dude, or do they just play card games now? We did not have. I don't think we had dominoes because it's a hard plastic. Mm-hmm. I was I was in jail, so we we didn't have um, just cards and and like I said, the game of desire to play with spades because. Uh, you really can't do more than four people with one deck, and if you get too many decks, it's considered contraband. So they couldn't. I don't. I think that you could only have one deck, and then there was like three per cell or per cell block. Wow. Um, do they get books, or like, is there a yes. library where they can go check out books? Yes, and oh, okay. um, future episode, what the pages are used for. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> no, no, All it's right, not like that. It's not like that. I'm, I'm, uh, my gross stuff is out of the way. I, oh, okay. I was, I was, oh, you've got another good, one up to sleep. That's a good cliffhanger. That's a good cliffhanger. Though, I like actually. it. Next week <laughs> on Prison Talk. Yeah, yeah, next week, write that down. Yeah, somebody should write that down. Do we, what do we want to move to then for our first? Well, if if you didn't want to leave that, you could definitely talk about the. Have, have you ever experienced that level of getting in trouble if you're cheating? Like I, I teach my kids now not to cheat when they're playing games specifically because I see, I saw how important it was to the people in prison. I mean, does anybody else think about that? Is that, I mean, you're gonna think about it if you wind up in jail. But is that a big deal? I don't deal? know that I've ever really like cheated any kind of games like. Um, like card games, board games, like, one on, with well, that kind of game. Specific. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I just never. It never. I've never really played for anything. <clears throat> like money or anything, it's usually just for fun and bragging rights. So I don't really feel the need to cheat. Like it's not a big deal. So I can't say that I've ever had experience doing that. So I guess if I went to prison, then I probably wouldn't cheat anyways. I think uh, if I, I were to prison, I would never want to leave my cell. I would just want to stay there all day long, dude. I would be so scared to even walk out, or, like to go do anything at all. I just want to stay in my little room and be fine. But the only game I could ever think of, like I'm not really a competitive person, but the one game that I do care about. Is Monopoly, dude. I used to play Monopoly with oh, my Monopoly, cousins, dude. and if you mess with my Monopoly, you try to cheat me in my money, you're going down. Seriously, like I, Monopoly's that game for me. Oh man, wow. Monopoly's the best sport game. You, in a, <laughs> you heard it here first. Punk man will cut you with a monocle. Seriously, you, you, <laughs> you, if you stay in my hotels, you owe me every dime, dude. Seriously. <laughs> uh, Whack man, I have a prison question based on what uh, Mr. Punk man just said. Sure. If I can remember what it was. Oh, oh, fail! No, he was. What was he, 
Oh, God. It was a good one, though. It was a good one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I remember now. So, people always say that people who... Because he mentioned staying in a cell because he'd be scared to go out because he'd get, like, beaten up or cut or something. So, people always talk about these really bad... I guess you weren't at, like, a maximum pen, maximum security penitentiary, so it might not you might not know as much about this, but you, you'll be able to provide some insight. Like, mm. the people who are, like, done something really, like, bad, like, a white-collar criminal, like, you, like money laundering or something like that, as opposed to someone who, like, is a murderer or something like that, like, the people who do more bad, I guess, if that makes sense, like, yes. the worst crimes, do they get treated worse by their fellow inmates? Is Because people always talk about, like, when somebody, a big trial, they get convicted, and people say, oh, they get, they'll get what's coming to them in prison. Kind of deal. Like, does that actually happen? That is a prison thing, uh, not so much a jail thing. Um, so, for most of that, I can't say. I know that the prison that you go to is usually with more people of your uh, same uh, sentencing or what? Yeah, similar, yeah, similar crimes, I guess. Yeah, similar, similar crime um, conviction similar convictions that, that you're in the prison with. So typically your child rapist is not in jail with your espionage guy. Um, and, and, but, the, I mean, the child rapist may be in with murderers. So it should not be good for the child rapist. Well, I, I have another question for you just to turn it back on you since I'm actually unable to answer that specific question. So you're just going to deflect want? Okay? Do you want it to deflect? Do you want that to happen? As part of the penal system, under under the table penal system. doesn't bother me if it happens. Well, okay, I think if the person, like, okay, so you guys know about this guy in Cleveland who had the three women trapped in his, like, cellar and was, like, holding them hostage for mm -hmm. ten years, that guy, mm -hmm. right? And he got he got sentenced to life in prison plus a thousand years. It's right. like, can we just, can we just, does he have to live off of taxpayer money for the rest of his life? Can we just put him away? Like, he doesn't deserve to live, okay, if he held three people hostage in his house for three or for 11 years, but three people. So if he gets, you know, if he gets stabbed on day 11, that doesn't bother me at all. Like, I I won't go as far to say I hope it happens because I don't want to wish that on anybody, even no matter who they are. But, like, that, that being a part of the whole prison system does not bother me, especially when I think that the person shouldn't be living off taxpayer money for the rest of their life or something that they did wrong. So, that's my opinion you, on that. You're treading into an interesting topic there as far as um, potentially the death penalty. So, what's the difference? What do you mean, what's I, the difference? That's a, you're right. That I is don't a, understand the question. There's exactly. a huge difference. Well, well, how, how about this? It, for, for What was that guy's name, anyway? Let's try to stay Aaron off the death guess. penalty. No. <laughs> the guy, the, the Cleveland penalty. guy. Well, I felt yeah, I felt like that's where he was going. Castro. I mean, because I, I don't see a difference. Okay, I I would not like to talk specifically about the death penalty. Why? Because it's political. Because because it even if it's not political, that is a huge divider of America in general. Okay. And it divides. It's a it's a divisive topic, not a a cohesive type topic. Um, that's what I'm, okay. Uh, that's fine. I, I was just—I felt like that's where he was going, and I didn't uh, see a difference. I, so I'd really like to not go there. But if you want to take this guy who locked people up in his basement for eleven years and lock him up in his own basement for eleven years, and whoever it is, if anybody wants to feed him, that's fine. If not, maybe that's fine. Um, I'm actually pretty—I have a pretty brutal stance on getting what you've done. Eye for eye an eye, eye. Yeah. Closer, closer to an eye for an eye, and I will just throw out that in the Bible there were no jails. Mm -hmm. It was immediate retribution, immediate payment for whatever wrong you had done, and it was over. There was no long-term pay it back kind of system. Yeah, just I saying. think I, I think I don't know. <clears throat> well, I'm trying trying to avoid the death penalty topic. I agree on the whole eye for an eye thing. In, the, in that your punishment should match your crime. So I feel that, but not necessarily be the same thing. Like you say, lock him in his own basement for 11 years, okay? But I don't, I think as far as damage-wise, like if you if you derail the lives of three other human beings by locking them in your basement for 11 years, then you should have your own life be taken. That, But that's all I'm saying. I believe in eye for an eye in that sense as opposed to matching the exact punishment Aren't you going to be a lawyer? 
Isn't that your, your it's, thought, your train of thought at the moment? It's on the, it's on the table. If you ever, if, if and when, hopefully you become a lawyer. Remember that if <clears throat> if if you're a lawyer, you're eligible later to become a judge, and this could come back around to haunt you. We'll just say you're a little kid right now. Just go ahead. And... Well, what do you mean? You saying that you saying that if let's somebody move on. wants me, if you I didn't mean to open up that can of worms. You're saying that if I have to sentence somebody, that they're gonna come back and watch three of our exploits number eleven and say, "Well, here he supported the death penalty, so if he doesn't get the death penalty here, he's a hypocrite." Is that well, what you're happened, saying? Because they happened run for your to, office for judge, dude. So they're gonna people are gonna vote for you yeah. for you know become judge, and they might well look at this back in 2013. This guy was for the death penalty or wasn't for it. So people and now do it's that 2050, and now it's 2056, and all my subs are middle aged. So I'm gonna dominate the election because I'm gonna have that whole demographic because I'll have so many subscribers. <laughs> oh, God. 17 minute timestamp for the annals of whatever court proceedings this is going into. In is it really 17? Yeah, it is 17 minutes. You're right. Yeah. Well, let's move on. I didn't mean to open yes. that can of worms. I thought that was good. There, that was a good discussion. <laughs> I think that was quality. Right. Anyways, who wants to throw out next topic? Whatever. We Console, want update. to be. Console, Console updates. Console updates. All right, we can. We have several. We have several yeah. things on here. Um, I'll just, I'll throw them out, and then you guys can pick what we want to talk about specifically. Well, let's first. just let's go down the list. We I have mean, HDMI for... recording for Xbox, which has been confirmed. Well, let's let's start with that one. Take it away, PS4 owner. <laughs> so, Xbox has been releasing a lot of uh, updates, news, releases. They're trying to do the right thing, which is, I think is great. One of the things that came up this week was that the Xbox One is compatible with current um, HDMI recording devices, such as the Elgato, you know, the Roxio, HDPVR, Hapog, all that stuff. So you, you can use it. And what it comes down to is, I, I forget what it's called. It's like HDCP. I think it's High bandwidth it's copyright like protection. That, yeah. That's what it is. High high bandwidth copyright protection. So that's why you can't record on the PS3 through HDMI, and you use the component. Um, and PS4 hasn't said anything, and we know there's no component cables on there. So I, I don't think they'll be stupid enough to do that. But Xbox has allowed you to record right through the HDMI, and I think that's a great thing. What do you guys think? Yeah. Well, for people who don't know, just you can't record HDMI on the PS3, which means you have to use component cables, yeah. which is why Bonfire was saying that the fact that there's no component cables on the PS4 may be an issue if they don't if they block HDMI recording. Yes. I doubt that they'd be stupid enough to do that. Yeah. There's like there's no I, I just don't see any way. The yeah. only way I could see them possibly being dumb enough to do that is the fact that they have built-in game recording in the console, and they may they, they look we know. We know that to us this makes no sense, being YouTubers, that it, it, it's unfathomable that they would do this, but game companies have done stupid things before that are stupider than this or as stupid. <laughs> so the only way I can see them is saying, hey, let's push our in-console recording and block HDMI, which obviously would be completely idiotic, but I wouldn't put it past a gaming company full of executives who don't understand the whole YouTube thing. I wouldn't put it past them doing that, but I doubt they will. But it is interesting that Xbox came out and confirmed it, at least. Well, look at Nintendo, well, I, dude. Like, Nintendo, yeah. recently, they said, like, any of their games, you know, uploaded mm -hmm. on YouTube will be yeah, exactly. copyrighted, dude. You know, a strike against that uh, YouTuber and stuff. So, hopefully, I don't think Sony would do that. But, um, because if you think about it, it's all free promotion for their console, free promotion yep. with the games, everything like that, free marketing. And I just, I, I have a feeling that sooner or later, we should be here saying about PS4 because... As of right now, we all know like that console, in my opinion, is aimed for the gamers, so and the YouTubers, in my opinion. So, I think later on that third-party capture device will be compatible with the PS4. So, hopefully. Yeah, I I think they're gonna come out with something here. Um, I know there's a couple events like PAX, and you know, at the end of the month. So, I think we'll we'll hear something from Sony by the end of the month because if you look at it as far as from a PR standpoint, anytime Microsoft does something or comes out with something, Sony's there to counter right away to try to make themselves look better. So I, I can see them, one, going with it, and two, announcing it by the end of the month. Wackmed, you, you look like you want to say something. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Wow. See, well, wow. in honesty, there's, there's too much money here to keep people from being able to record because the people who are on YouTube because of gaming typically spend more money in gaming. That's a good right. point. Yeah. Well, so. I forgot. I'm glad Punk Man brought up the Nintendo thing because I actually forgot about that. That Nintendo said anybody who posts a Let's Play of our games, you have to give us all of the money you earn off of it. 
Mm -hmm. I think that was what they actually ended up doing. So it's mm -hmm. not, and that's a, from a dying company that could have used all of the help they could get, and now they're going to die anyways. I'm just throwing that out there. So I don't know. The, the, the fact that Nintendo would do something makes it makes me think that any company could do anything really that stupid. But uh, you think about it, the, point. Nintendo was like the grandfather of gaming, dude. Like, you know, that was like the only big dog in the show. But I just feel like Nintendo kind of self imploded from the inside because they started just catering to like younger generation. They didn't Seven really, year olds who yeah, play Wii sports. You know, back then when I was that age, of course I played Nintendo, Super Nintendo, sixty four, and it was fine. But when you get older, you're gonna evolve, and I think they need to realize that they have a they need a bigger demographic of people to cater to instead of just like the younger generation. But it'll be interesting to see what happens in Nintendo in a couple of years, man. Nintendo just died because. They went with the Wii, and it was a good. It was a good. It was a good effort, and it was a solid idea. And I applaud them for taking that risk of making a console that you wave your arms around like an idiot. But it did not work. And then by sinking even more money into the Wii U, which I think is sold. Pro I guess I'm assuming, considering how much hype there was about the Wii when it first started, and how much of a disappointment it was to a lot of people, I'm assuming that the Wii U sold less than the Wii did. So I think, I think, I think so. they died with the consoles more than anything, but that's just me. I don't want to. Well, if you guys don't want to go too much into Nintendo talk, then that's fine. But no, I, I think uh, it's fine. I don't think Nintendo's gonna does is in a dire situation as you say. Um, they have a very strong product in the 3DS. It took two to three years to get off the ground. I'm not saying the Wii U is gonna be what the Wii was, but N Nintendo with the Wii, they they aimed at the casual gamer. So. With the Wii U, they, they realized that they we need to get with the hardcore gamers, so they tried to mix mix both with the HD, the online compatibility, as well with the tablet interface and, you know, those motion games. So they tried to do both, and they found themselves, like, four to five years behind Sony and Microsoft, and that's what you're seeing right now with the Wii U. I, I don't think they're they're going to go away anytime soon. I think they'll have to change their game plan. I think they need to go back to um, what the GameCube could have been, because that was actually a pretty solid competitor against the original Xbox and PlayStation 2. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't think Nintendo is in as bad as you think. So let's look at what Nintendo is. Nintendo is a pedigree, and, I'm, and thank you for hitting that, the grandfather of, of gaming. Nintendo is also well-respected in the gaming community. When the Wii came out, immediately... Uh, uh, Microsoft and Sony executives were in meetings, like launch day of this thing, uh, launch day of the trailer of this thing. You've got two uh, huge companies that, I don't want to say scared, but concerned is mm -hmm. definitely a good word. What are they going to do? How are we going to counter it? They they have audience retention. If anything else, Nintendo has huge audience retention. I've still got a Wii I've been playing it for 20 years. I've been playing Nintendo products for 20 years. Um, and I actually keep my eye on it, and it's a viable conversation because it is Nintendo, just because it's the game. In fact, you can ask a lot. You can ask a, an audience of older people. I'm not going to say a lot. What is this game console? And they would probably brand it the Nintendo, despite w whether it's a Xbox or PlayStation or any other console, just because Nintendo was the first I see, like, mainstream. What people call all sodas Coke kind of deals. You're saying everything's yeah. a Coke. Yeah, That's every a good every, okay. every little thumb clicker is a Nintendo. Um, my parents do that. Um, yeah. I know several other people that do that. Um, Nintendo won't die, but what they have to do is something something big in about three or four years from now because at that point the money will be there after this console war is over to pick up the extra people. Somebody's washing machine's going. That's my driveway. Or my, uh, drive, my garage, whatever. Not my driveway. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm still really tired. But, he well, let the okay, hose out say, from last night's rave. <laughs> <laughs> But if you say Nintendo is is not gonna die though, if they don't, they may okay. When I say they die, they may not go under as a company, but they I personally feel like they've already slipped towards irrelevancy. Not they're not irrelevant, but I'm saying they're getting there. 
I think at the least they become irrelevant as a cons at least as a console developer. I think what Nintendo needs to do is they need to say, okay, the the move the movement based consoles do not work. They cannot compete mm-hmm. with. They can't. The, the movement based consoles can't compete with the main consoles. That's why. Look. That's Have why you seen the Wii sales? Have you You're seen the, what the Xbox One and P? Yeah, but that was when it was new, and now look well, at the Wii. Overall, the Wii is outsold. Like, Everything, as far as I understand, it's not gonna out. It won't outsell the Xbox One or the PS4, though. And also, the mm-hmm. reason that everybody bought the Wii, the reason I bought a Wii, is because, at least, and I'm sure this is why a lot of people, it's just because it was something new, and we expected the movement thing to be good. I think I speak for a lot of people when we say it was a bit disappointing. To be honest, it wasn't bad. You could still have fun on the Wii, but look at the. I think a better judge, you say, look at the Wii. Well, that's. I don't think that's fair because the Wii was the first of its kind, and everybody was waiting to. Or I guess I won't say the first of its kind because there may be something out there I'm not familiar with. But it was the first mainstream console based on that, so everybody wanted to buy it to see what it was about. I think a better judge would be looking at the Wii U because now we know what the movement-based consoles are about. We know what to expect. Do we still want to buy it? Whereas you look at people buying the Xbox One, they know what the Xbox 360 was and the P- PS3, or the PS4 for that matter, either one of the, these consoles. They say, we know what the past ones have been, and they were good enough to make us want to buy another one. If the Wii, if the Wii U sales are bad, which I, I'm pretty sure they were, then that's basically people saying, we bought the Wii, it was disappointing, we didn't like the idea of it, so we're not buying the new version. So I think the only way Nintendo can come back is if they either they do one of two things. They focus on game development, they put all of their time and money into game development and just forget consoles and try to develop games for the two main consoles and become a game developer as opposed to an overall console and game developer. Or if they go back and they make make a GameCube 2 or make a new Nintendo console, make a, make a standard gaming console... And you can cater it. They can do what they've been doing. They can cater it to younger people, but they're the more that they put into the move thing, the the faster the ship sinks. I think. So as far as your sales numbers go, um, in its first, and this comes from CNBC. Uh, dot com in its first five months, the Wii U sold 1.1 million units, compared with 2.1 million Wiis when that system came out. Wow! And to put it into perspective, in the first three months of 2013, without holiday sales to boost it, the eight-year-old Xbox 360 sold 844,000 units, 75% of the Wii U's life-to-date numbers. Yeah, that's the Wii U. I was referring to the Wii. Well, but okay, that's the Wii thing. sold the Wii. 2.1. But the I don't Wii, think you could say that the Wii is irrelevant. I'm not saying the Wii is irrelevant, mm-hmm. but what I'm saying is throwing out the Wii sales as saying that the movement consoles are strong is unfair because that's like because everybody wanted to know what the Wii was about because it was such a new thing and nobody had ever tried it before on the on the in the major market and no and Nintendo at this point at this point of the Wii coming out Nintendo is still considered a top flight console development company so it's Nintendo is. At when the Wii came out, it's still it's still considered to be up there. Like right. it hadn't, yeah. So you've got one of the main, best console developing companies. You've got a brand, you've got their brand new console. So the, if even if it if it had been a GameCube two, it's still going to sell well. You've got the plus you got the fact that it's a completely new concept. All that thrown into there, it's got to sell well because everybody wants to see what the Wii is about. I think the fact that more or less. The half of the people who bought the Wii decided they didn't like it enough to buy the Wii U shows how strong it really was. Whereas you look at Xbox 360 compared to Xbox One or PS3 compared to PS4, it's not. You can't say the same thing. You can't say that half the people who bought this gen consoles for PlayStation or Xbox didn't like it enough to buy the next one. I that's think my, uh, that's my point. One of the big reasons why the Wii U is so popular is because it was new, like you said. Uh, but the thing, a big factor of it was the price. I think because I think when it was launched, it was like a two ninety nine console. Uh, or I could don't quote me on that, but I know it's cheaper than the Xbox three hundred and sixty and the PS three. So my aunt and uncle for Christmas time, they were like, "Okay, my kid wants a gaming console. I'm obviously to buy the cheaper one." So I think a price was a big factor in how successful the Wii was when it launched. But I mean, nowadays, if you're looking for games and performance and you know graphics and stuff, obviously, like my generation. Are probably be lean more towards the 360 and the PS3. Well, I think you also have to look at lack of support from not only third-party developers but also first-party developers with Nintendo, and I think that's one of the reasons why the Wii U is not having the retention that it it, it needs, as well as getting the console sales um, or driving the console sales because 
you, you look at in the, when every time you launch a new console, you have to have a solid lineup, and we're seeing that right now because both Microsoft and Sony know that you have to have a lot of solid launch titles within that first year. Nintendo has kind of screwed that up because we don't expect we're, like, we're not seeing the the games that a lot of these guys want to see with you know like the Mario we saw like saw a couple of Mario's but they're rehashes but like Zelda's Metroid's F Zero's Star Fox all that stuff they're they're big titles we're not seeing those and Pikmin just came out which is a very big Nintendo title and we just now saw that and it's what I don't know seven or eight months after the launch of the Wii U so I think you. Nintendo is learning a big lesson as far as having a strong console lineup. And with the Wii, they, again, didn't have that solid third-party support. So you have to have that to maintain interest in your console and drive sales. I think that's a huge factor with Nintendo. Wackman, you've really chimed in a few minutes. Do you have any thoughts? It's it's Nintendo. It's Nintendo and old people are going to buy Nintendo because that's what they know. You're gonna have a lot of problems in the next ten minutes. In ten, sorry, in the next ten years, um, <laughs> with figuring out what they're gonna do. I think they have one more effort, and that comes in four years, five years from now, because they came out with Motion, and immediately Sony and Xbox, or Sony and and Microsoft got Motion. It was so bad that I think Sony's almost completely dropped it now. Um, I, I haven't Microsoft heard anybody gonna, mention Sony's PS Move and like. A year, at least. So, so uh, Xbox is going to try it. Xbox is going to try to take it and make it a part of their console. Other than that, mm-hmm. so every good thing about the Wii, except the the pedigree of titles, the history of titles, the Xbox will have. Plus, fantasy football and. TV and plus a better I console think, in general. I but. think they'll play games too. Um, maybe we'll see. Maybe there's there's rumors, unconfirmed. They might change it. They might do a 180 based, on that. Based on they might do it. Yes. Based Watch on out the now. pictures I've seen of the console, there does appear to be a disc tray where you can insert games. That's so. actually just a DVD tray. Well, that's you DVD, never know. That's that's, 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 that's where the excitement comes in. Is trying to figure <laughs> that out. Bah, bah, bah. Uh, so. I gotta get my sound effects queued up for that stuff. Yeah, so, we need um, some sound effects in here. So, anyways. <laughs> We know Oyster doesn't like Nintendo because he doesn't even know what a regular Nintendo is. Dude, I That's played the Nintendo nice. 64 and the GameCube. The no, 64, no. man. Dude, you just played Duck Hunt, man. Look, I know. Yes, you played Duck Hunt. He's like, I don't even know what that is. Oh, no, I've heard of that. The actually. original oh, motion controllers no, with the power the first, glove. The first, but in all seriousness, though, the first three gaming console slash devices that I owned were all Nintendo made. So you can't say that I have any negative bias towards Nintendo by not playing it. It's the first the first uh, the first gaming console the first time I ever experienced video games at all was with the Nintendo sixty four at my friend's house. Wow. Then the first console or anything I ever got, I got a Game Boy when I for Christmas when I was five years old. The original the Game Boy or was it like a Game Boy Advance or a Game Boy Color? I think I had bo- I had a Game Boy original I've played I played a Game Boy original and then I also had a Game Boy Advance, so I had both. But okay. and right. then the first console I ever bought was a GameCube, which I got when I was like seven. So then yeah. I didn't get to Xbox so, till I was like nine years old. So what kind of experience you don't have is your dad and his three brothers. That we were at my cousin's house, dad and his three brothers drinking <laughs> beer, cussing that dog for all he was drawn for because he'd go <laughs> whenever you missed your ducks. Dude, I'm telling you, if if you never saw a grown man nearly throw a beer bottle at a TV over a laughing dog, you don't know Nintendo. <laughs> well, it, and, and to me, the golden age of of gaming to a lot a first of first person shooters. <laughs> that was oh the best. Well, yeah, but no, I'm saying that like well, the golden age of Nintendo is Super Nintendo, at least in my opinion, just because there were well, so many great games out on there, and the, and the, like a lot of the RPGs and a lot of the some of the gaming concepts we see today came from Super Nintendo. Okay, well, don't, how about this then? I'll spin that into a negative against Nintendo. So you guys are basically saying I didn't, I wasn't old enough to play the the good Nintendo stuff. Basically, is it like you're saying that the 64, okay, GameCube, okay, Game Boy, okay, but the Super Nintendo was where it's at and all that stuff. Don't you don't you think that it speaks badly about Nintendo that I've been alive on this earth for 15 years and they haven't come out with a good console in that time? 
compared to their old consoles. So I think you guys just ran it into the ground yourselves by trying to make it sound good. So congratulations. Nah, I, I I disagree with that. Little from, hit, Colin, well, man, little from Colin B. Well, but yeah, here's I mean, my point. Like, okay, so the fact that you have to go all the way back to the Super Nintendo and Duck Hunt to say that those were the days of good Nintendo being, like Nintendo being the best. The fact that you have to go that that far back to say those are the days of Nintendo doesn't that say that now Nintendo's age. crap? You, so, okay, you could say the same point about video games in general, that the golden age of video yeah. games is in the 80s when you had all the arcade cabinets. True. Okay, th- but that's but then you're I mean, saying, then are we comparing video games to movies and stuff? Because then we're, you're, you're deflecting, no. you're deflecting, Fire. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm, it's I'm just, I'm, I'm it's saying the same thing as your point. point. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a separate you know, point, not, a, not the far, same point. Well, you're, you're, okay. Punk Man had something to say. <laughs> Hey, whack it up. Bonfire, be honest, dude. You've, we've all done this. When playing duck hunt, you put, you put the gun right next to the screen of the TV yeah. and try shooting the ducks in the air, and you still miss. Like, they used to be yep. annoying me so bad. Exactly. But uh, to be honest, Tactical Oyster, I think the reason why, like, myself, maybe whack Med and Bonfire, like, we go back to the classic Nintendo is because back then, like, there was no multiplayer. There was no... If you wanted to play with friends, you had to go to the, be in that same room with them and play. And that was the classic fun times of gaming in my opinion mm-hmm. but nowadays everything's so technical when it comes to multiplayer and uh, all this kind of different stuff but I think if you have a chance even if you go to GameStop and you talk to the older guys you ask them what their favorite console is they're going to refer back to the first Nintendo Super Nintendo 64 because those are all classic games that helped evolve gaming get to where it is today in my opinion So I think, it, I I think, it's, a, I think it's a generational gap where people always want to talk about whatever the I understand your point completely. It's a good point. But I think whatever your first console or your first main console that you put a lot of time into, or like whatever the first bands you listen to as a teenager and the music you listen to when you're growing up, how come every person who who's ever been almost almost every person who's ever been on this planet in the last like 50 years always when they get to be middle aged they always say the music was better when we I was had a kid. the best music. That's true. That's <laughs> exactly. a true story. That's, so it's. <laughs> it's, that's the same concept, and so I'll probably in 25 years when we're playing on the Xbox 8000 and we're playing on the PlayStation 7. It'll be just a PC, man. I'll pro- and 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 I'll probably be saying, and we have all kinds of you know, like it, by that point you'll probably be able to like transfer yourself into the game and like just run around and stuff, like <laughs> most likely. All the deck on. So, yeah, yeah. So uh, at that point, I'll probably be like, "Well, we had it good in the Xbox 360, bunch of kids and stuff." Well, so you, it's the me, same. I'll, I don't know. I want to battle your point one more time, and that is that okay. uh, l- lately, Three Bar Exploits, the, the guys on here, uh, have been looking for a game to play with each other that is not. Boy, that sounded bad. That is not Call of Duty, and and we're coming up. We're throwing out different random titles, and one of them that came up was Oyster, a title Oyster brought up was um, Dorito Crunch, what, what's that Doritos called? Dorito's Crash Course, you've played the game Dor- it's on, I have see yeah, it on your, yeah, yeah because I have. when you play the game it throws up your te- your uh, friend's I times played, and I see I played, it. So. I played a better version of that on the Nintendo that's called fair. Mario uh, I play- yeah. <laughs> okay uh, that, I, mean, and that, I mean that's what I'm that, the thing is this, all of not all of a large or a significant portion of the really good games now have their roots deeply seated in an 8-bit version of themselves. If we're using Doritos Crash Course to say that all current-gen games are based on old games, that, I don't know. I didn't. No, I said yeah, a significant... Wow. Way I mean, out of context there, buddy. Yeah. It just, it's mean, like, what, if, you, what, if you think about it... Like where's the Zelda? 8-bit version of Call Hold of Duty? What, what, if you think what? about it, look at Zelda. Um, it started back on some Metal Nintendo. Slug? Let's let Puck Man talk or about Contra. Zelda. Well, like if you talk about classic eight bit games, like look at Zelda, for one, and then one of my favorite series of games is Metal Gear Solid, dude. Oh, like Metal Gear Solid yeah. was yes class, to this day. Where's that? Where is it? Where that? And uh, <laughs> thank you. No, nah, but I'm just saying, like I think, like Wackman said, like you can play these games. They're more funner back on the previous consoles, like, back in the day, but, I mean, it's all preference, it's all opinion, but, I mean, that's all. <laughs> I'm sorry, well, I, I just want to say, it's the same concept, I, I, I just want to say, whiskey bottles. it's Bonfire. so good to have someone on the podcast who's played something more than Call of Duty. 
I just... Oh, shit. Kid... <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm not going to get mad. I'm just going to say... He's playing Metal Gear Solid, people. Those I games are so Metal good. Gear. I played Metal Gear on, on the PlayStation 1. Metal nice. Gear Solid? I'm I'm just gonna uh, say just remember. because Whack Man is only plays Call of Duty now does not mean that I only play Call of Duty now. That is uh, we're not the same person. Speaking of nostalgia. Um so <laughs> Bonfire, I we need to have a talk. Call of Duty. We need to have a talk about this later. Alright, All right, private I, chat. You slandering my name. <laughs> So speaking of nostalgia, what Wack made when he was telling his story about us three trying to find a game we wanted to play with together, I threw out Ghostbusters. Who hasn't yes. seen Ghostbusters, right? It's an awesome, awesome movie. Oyster, has awesome. In, Oyster has it, which I'm sure I'm about to get blasted for in this conversation at some point. Dude, you can continue. go ahead and put on your blast shield, your riot shield. <laughs> Hang on. Let me your juggernaut suit on. Oh, the juggernaut suit. So Jug. good. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Please continue. Oh, I mean, come on. Ghostbusters is so good. Everything about it is so good. And that game came out in 2008. It's amazing. It's got the original actors. It's written by Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, who also wrote Ghostbusters 1 and 2. And it's so fun. So fun. And you'll never experience it because you just, I don't know. I haven't played that yet, dude. I, actually, I highly recommend it. Really? Yes. You can probably get it for like... 10, 15 bucks now. So good. So good. Yeah, I think I priced it. I was I was about to download it. It was $15 DRM. Nice. Uh, if you go get a Cheeto copy of it, a Cheeto covered copy of it, then it may be a little cheaper. Speaking of Cheetos. Yes. Just so you know, Mr. Punk Man, I'm very anti GameStop. Really? I am. You, why is that? Why don't you go check out my video on why I don't like GameStop? <laughs> Cha ching! Where oh, that? Where's the effects? Yeah, I'm I'll check it out. There it is. Hey yo. Hi yeah. yo. Um, but anyways, that's a different yeah. conversation. Yeah. Headset adapters. Yeah. Okay. Here's a good one. So I can speaking buy my of more. Now. Yay. Yeah. So more information that Microsoft is releasing about the Xbox One is the. <laughs> are coming out with a headset adapter to work with current gen headsets. Thank God. Except it's not priced. I personally think it'll be $29.99 sold at your local retailer or online. And it doesn't come with the Xbox One. It does not or does? Does not. I I agree it probably does not. No, because it that's they that's it. Oh, it, oh you okay, I'm sorry. No, I'm so confirming that. Yeah, yeah. It does no. not. But I'm saying I, I think up, Black Med. Ooh, I think it'll be priced at twenty nine ninety nine. That's okay. just my well, guess. See, that that's where I missed the words because you were you were proposing a possible price, and I thought that you were also proposing a possible oh, my lack bad. of it being sold. But okay, yeah, I I would never have thought that it would have been in there anyway. Uh, they're not going to make money off of the sale of those headsets. Uh, well, they they hold don't, don't they make Triton? Doesn't Microsoft make Triton? No, yes. I don't think so. That's Mad Cat. It's the company that makes Tritons. Doesn't Microsoft make a head? I thought they made one. I thought they had hands in one. They have. I'm sorry. I know Call of Duty has hands in Turtle Beach, but I'm not sure if yeah. Microsoft does directly with anybody. I don't think they do. Only I actually am using Turtle Beach as well. So I think Wack nice. Turtle Beach is on, so it kind of fits. I do too. I have Turtle Beach is too. Oh, well, you guys are noobs. <laughs> what are you using? I use Tritons. I'm about to buy some Astros, though, now that I know that we yeah. can... Uh, I, the only reason I was holding out, because I've saved up money for a while so I can buy Astros, and the only reason I've been holding out is because I didn't know about the whole adapting thing. I didn't want to blow 400 bucks on a headset and then say, in five months, it's not gonna, I'm not going to be able to use it. So now that... I'll probably get them now that I know it'll actually work. See, now that really worried yeah. me, because I don't have... like If you start adding up what it costs to buy an Xbox One and just get one game... It's pretty exorbitant because you got five hundred dollars for the console. This is a four hundred dollar headset. Wow! So it's three hundred or a four hundred dollar headset. I think it may be three. 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 I think it's three. So that's eight hundred dollars. I'm gonna have a hundred dollars in a pre-ordered game because you're gonna have the all of the DLC package included with that. So you're up to nine, and that doesn't even include uh, an additional controller or other HDMI cable, whatever, there's always something else you have to buy with the game anyway. So, 
Um, whenever you order your copy of Mass Effect 4, or actually, what's that? Sunset Overdrive is the one that I'm really looking forward to. Ha, ha, ha. Um, the, you're talking about almost dropping a G-spot just to just to get this console. Yes. Well, and then you talk about rechargeable battery packs, unless you want to burn through batteries. Like a those are those supposed to be aren't they rechargeable? Don't they come with a, they come rechargeable, built in. The battery pack's built into the Xbox One controller. Prove it. Why would they be selling the rechargeable battery packs? Which is the next topic we're getting into. Well, let's just go there because I the what well, I really, heard, so, no, I'm, I'm go sorry, ahead I, no, go I ahead. Sounded, I sounded rude, but from what I understand, it's all supposed to be contained in. Like, when, when the battery pack starts failing and, and dying in its life cycle, you just have to go buy a new controller because it doesn't come out. No. And that's not true. No. Go ahead. It's just like the Xbox 360's controller with the... You start with the batteries in the little in the back of the controller, and they're selling for, which was released this week, twenty four ninety nine. the rechargeable battery pack, similar to what you see on the Xbox 360's controller. So if you throw that in, there's an extra 25 bucks times how many controllers you want to purchase, which they also listed the price of the Xbox One controller, which is fifty nine ninety nine for extra controllers. Ooh, that is purdy. That is purdy. Is that a mag <laughs> nah, just a PS3 controller, dude. So, I so mean, yeah. and basically, the, so the rechargeable battery packs are about a $5 difference between mm-hmm. Xbox 360 and the Xbox One controller is $10 difference, so it's a little more expensive, um, but you're going to have to pick these things up. And, and like you were saying, Wackman, to your point, it, these things add up, and to me, I understand why they do it to make a little extra money. You know, I, I understand it from a business standpoint, but from a consumer standpoint, it, it after a while, it starts to feel like you're getting gouged left and right. That, I mean, that's my personal opinion, but but yeah. If I'm gonna choose to spend the extra hundred dollars on the Xbox, anyways, then I'm not even know. talking about that. that buying well, what I'm saying if I'm gonna choose to say, okay, I'm buying the Xbox, I'm spending the extra hundred dollars, anyways. Then obviously I'm dedicated to that console, and I think it's if if you're if you're split 50-50 between the consoles, you're gonna buy the PlayStation because it's cheaper. So if you're committed to buying the Xbox, you truly believe that it's going to be better. So spending the extra money that's made in the difference for the accessories, I don't know. I mean, it does add up, but I mean, it's you're you're gonna have this console for eight years or whatever. Mm. Hopefully. I'm I'm saying I'm going to spend more money. I'm going to have to spend more money in accessories than I am on the actual console. That's where all the money ends up. Like over time, five hundred dollars on accessories. Uh, two hundred dollars scuff controller, a three hundred. Okay, no, you're already at the price. That's not required to play that. So neither is a headset or. If you say I'm buying the stock Xbox controller, I'm buying a stock Xbox headset because you're gonna. Oh wait, you have to buy the Xbox One headset. I don't know. I, I think you it, do. I was making okay. a point there. The he, the headset, yes. The connect is supposed to fix that. But, at the but moment. saying that because you, you're buying asteroids and scuff is not that mm-hmm. you can't because that's your choice. You don't have to buy that to play. That's not a required accessory that they're making you pay for. But it's what I have to look at. And well, but you're going to do that on I mean, if, console. If you right? had a family of six kids, you'd have to look into buying four controllers. You know, just whatever, everyone's own personal situation leans into it. And the best way to go, the cheapest way to go, is to go with the Wii U. Just saying. You can, you okay. can get them. Because the everyone already owns store. a Wii, and you can use the Wii Motes. Yeah, sure. There you go. You don't need extra controllers. Yeah, yeah. You just need the Wii U in a game. hey <laughs> <laughs> This is how many people play the Wii U. Wow. Ow. So there you go. <laughs> That's a good point. Wow. Poor Nintendo. Four to ten, though. I'm just bashing them. I know. Jeez. Mm. Speak my mind. Have some respect for an old man console. <laughs> for real. I have plenty of respect for the days when Nintendo consoles were good. Respect you don't own. remember them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that, okay, you're just feeding my point even more. No, we're not. If, I, if, if they haven't had a good console in 15 years, then what does that say? They're capable of awesomeness. But if, they... I, lots of people are capable of lots of things, and lots of people screw up lots of things that they're capable of doing well. <laughs> Microsoft. Coming from no, the guy who's I'm, buying the Xbox One. So how about that? Just bash your decision. 
My, uh, I'm buying Oyster. The, I am buying Oyster. the Xbox One. I'm just waiting to give them my money until they announce something worthy of spending my money with them and having my vote cast with... What if they don't? They had, well, he's going to join me and well, Mr. Punkman87 like, in they, PlayStation, they, PlayStation gonna, Dominance. Is it the dark side? <laughs> what are they going to announce that they haven't announced already that's going to say, okay, this is the reason? I understand, because really? you've explained this concept to me before, that you like to wait until developers or people put something out there that earns the purchase, so to speak. Right. Like, it's like you don't pre-order Call of Duty games the day they announce it. You wait till you see the multiplayer and stuff, I guess, because you at least you told me that before. Or you wait till yeah. you see something. So right. I guess... Right. Right. What what's gonna what's gonna be that tipping point for the Xbox for you then? Um, when he sees that exclusive title that hasn't been announced yet, maybe I don't know. When just they shut everyone up, when they say, because here's what it is: is at the moment everybody's yapping, uh, everyone fueled by PlayStation by Sony is yapping about the Xbox 180. When they come out with something that shuts down the Xbox 180 argument altogether and says, this is our product, this is what we believe in, and this is what we stand behind, then they will have earned my money. Until they can, that day as well. Until they say, this is our company stance on DRM, and this is what it's going to be, I really hope you enjoy it. And say it like that, that's confidence. when they will have earned my money. It's, Not when they say... You'll be playing the Xbox 360 for three years, then. Say, say it again. I didn't hear you. Sounds to me like you'll be playing the Xbox 360 for three years. And there's nothing mm, wrong with that, because there's still no. games coming out. Yeah, they're still supporting <laughs> it. They're still supporting it, yeah. It, it really... I, I don't... It's not going to take that long. This is business, and business always runs in, in a set pattern. They know when they're going to be releasing this information. They just haven't told us yet. Yeah, but what if that's in three years? It's not in three years. They will. They will win this year. Oh, so I guess you work for Microsoft now. So you know this is a fact. It's I not hate a the whole console well, war thing. It, I got to be honest. It's a business thing. It's, well, but, it's a okay, business but, standpoint. Well, but don't you think they're gonna wait a little while, considering that it'll take at least a year or two for people to transition to for everybody to transition to the new consoles? So they come out in June of next year and say we're switching everything to DRM. They're gonna drive off a lot of potential purchases that they still could have gotten. That's from a, from a business if they, standpoint. If they're not a competitor this Christmas shopping season, they may never again be a competitor. Ooh, big words from Mike Med. Well, I mean, it's 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 just it's just business. Oh, that was good. That was good. Where's that tagline? <laughs> And well and that that's one of the reasons to transition. Why I think you're going to see um, the price drop is. Oh, I mean, have you guys seen the, the um? There was supposedly some obscure internet source that said that the Xbox was going to drop its price to compete with the PlayStation. It's un, unsubstantiated, and uh, IGN actually did a story about it. Um, Couple of weeks ago, uh, about after the first, what do they call it? The the, the day of sale version, launch day, day one edition, day one edition. When after the day one editions, as soon as that's over, they'll start an edition with a smaller hard drive, and they'll start an edition without if, the connect. And if they, but, well, they can't do it without gonna, the connect. If they they can't, they're gonna one eighty. No, they can do it without the connect. They could one. But, if they, isn't the connect required? For the Xbox yeah. to work? Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? I was under the impression. Did they pull another 180? Or they do a 90? First of all, none of this is. Com I can tell you why this is, all this info is complete bullcrap right this moment exactly. Ooh, it's because if they were going to if they were going to do that, then they would have already announced it so that people who were pre-ordering the ah. P PlayStation left and right would stop and think about. Because think about if if this information supposedly was known weeks ago. Think about how many people have already pre-ordered the PlayStation for specifically for price reasons between now and then. So why would Microsoft say we're going to wait so that more and more people can keep buying the opposing console for the price when we're going to drop the price anyways? Why would they? So, so here's how. It's, so it's here's how this works. There are such a small percentage of people that f want to fight between Xbox and PlayStation that it's not worth marketing to them. 
What I want to know is the people that are going to buy the Xbox One, how soon can I get them to do that? Because fighting with the PlayStation, that's over. I mean, those those punches have been traded. That fight is over. And now you're working on what's left with your consumer base. Like, uh, for politicians, you only do a certain amount of debates. You shore up your base and you get your people out to vote. And that's how elections are won. Is you get All the Republicans have to get the Republicans to come vote so that a Republican will win. You don't spend your time fighting with a Democrat trying to get a Democrat to vote for a Republican. Interesting analogy. Let's leave the politics. Yeah. But well, I'm, what about there's no reason to fight over it. I like the analogy. That was good. What about trying to get an independent to vote for you then? Then, then, that's, then that's in market. That's just in regular marketing. I don't know how to do that. That's that's part well, of what the I'm saying marketing. is. Let's say there, here's mom and pop who are going to buy a console for their child, and they pre-ordered their PlayStation three to days ago. No, okay, just drop on Nintendo. <laughs> they're, they pre-ordered their PlayStation three days ago because they see that it's a hundred dollars less. If Microsoft announces a week ago that we're going to have cheaper versions of the Xbox available. At, a month after launch, and they may say, okay, we only have to wait one month. We can still give it as a Christmas present because it'll be out by Christmas, and we don't have to worry about the price. Let's buy the Xbox instead. I think saying that that would not sway mm. anybody whatsoever is inaccurate, at least I would think. I'm not a marketing mm. professional. I'm but. just saying that's a, such a small percentage of the people who are buying that it, I don't know that it's worth spending money trying to get them. That's fair, I guess. We'll agree uh, to disagree. What do you think? Oh. The, I, the whole price chart that day is totally just BS. They're not going to drop the price for like good two to three years. And it, from as far as I, I'm understanding with what the executives are saying, at least in their PR, is that they're confident that when you pay $500 for the Xbox One, you're getting $500 worth of product. They're confident in that. Right. And then I, I don't think I, I can see them coming out with you know smaller hard drive editions like what they did with the Xbox 360. You know had the I think they call it the arcade edition, with like very little memory. I don't know, Oyster. What do they call it? Oyster. What do they what? call it, Mister? Oh, I don't man. have a hard drive. The reason I don't have, have a hard drive is I don't have the original Xbox 360. It's not because I bought a cheapo version. Thank you very much. Uh, let me ask you this: not get If you get a red ring next month, what are you going to do? Because you got the Ooh, Xbox One coming good out. Question. You don't want to fork over money for a new hard drive. What are you going to do? Wait, well, can't you just get them to re- can't you just send it off and get them to repair it, or if they can't repair it, cost a hundred bucks. It's like, yeah, it's also like a one month turnaround. Yep. Okay, what is it right now? It's August fourth that we're recording this. <laughs> He's but, doing just, that. Well, I'm just trying to figure out the exact. No, I'm trying to figure out the exact time. But look though. at it this it's way August, as well. It's it's well, it's just basically three. It's three and a half months till the consoles come out, more or less. So you're saying if my if I get a red ring tomorrow and I either have to I have to pay a hundred bucks and wait a month to get my Xbox back or I just wait three and a half months to to get the Xbox One. I'm just wondering yeah. what you would do. Yeah, because you're not willing to fork over money for even an external hard drive to format it to even give yourself sixty extra gigs for twenty dollars. No, I actually would have. I would if if the Xbox One were coming out next year instead of this year, I would have done that. But the fact that I only have to wait three more months doesn't. I don't want to. Put it. I refuse to put any more money into the Xbox 360. That's not. That can't translate over to the Xbox One because I think it's a waste at this point. And I will say, if, I will tell you the reason that I would not get my console repaired is because my dad has an Xbox Two and I can just play on his. Listen to <laughs> this kid. He has an Xbox Cheater. 360. So, Listen to if, this kid. If, if if this was the only Xbox I had, I would send it and get it repaired because I couldn't. Mostly, be, well, first of all, the fact that I would I would like to not have to go two months without being able to play Xbox. That's something I would like to avoid if possible, just because yeah. I enjoy playing Xbox. But also because what would I do on YouTube? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what. Well, what would I? I, I couldn't get any gameplays of any game. I couldn't. Also, I couldn't talk to any of my friends on Xbox. I couldn't do any of that stuff. So I would. I would. I would have to get a new Xbox if I couldn't play my dad. That's, that's what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted punk, to hear. Punk, punk man, what what about you? Your 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 PlayStation craps out when you turn it on this afternoon. Are you waiting well, for the PS4, or are you gonna you gonna be buying one? Well, actually, when uh, remember last year when the PSN network was down for like a month, month and a half. That I killed me, dude. Was that last year or was that last week? That happens pretty often. I'm oh, <laughs> the time you're talking about. This is get why we call you a fanboy, Wackman. Just, just so you know, just for the record. This I'm, is why this I happens. Don't. I'm, I'm good with it. 
Okay, just throw that <laughs> yeah, out. He's there. learned to accept it. You should as well. I've learned to accept it. I would accept it, it if it were true, but you know, it's not. So. You know what? To be honest, like I used to have a 360, man. I used to have the first edition 360 when it came out, and I experienced two red rings of death, dude, on the, on two different consoles. Yep. So mm-hmm. after that, I kind of stopped playing games for maybe a good six months. I traded my stuff in, and then I actually got a PS3 at that time. And I've actually had the same PS3 since then. So I think this is about 2007 when this took place. Wow. And I play quite a bit, and I've never... Besides the being down for a month and a half, that's the only thing that's ever been bummed me out about the whole PSN thing, PlayStation 3 thing. So, to say, I guess you could call me a fanboy or a loyal follower of the Sony product because, to me, it's proved itself when when it was down, man. Like, they corrected the issue with the security issue. They gave us free stuff. Yep. And I don't well, know. Well, news alert. What? Free stuff. They gave us free stuff, but like, I don't know. I, I just feel like if if PS4 has issues on launch day, I feel like Sony will correct it with no penalties or anything like that, dude. Which I, I don't think it's gonna happen, but I mean that's yeah. just my opinion. About the red ring thing, I had like two red. I've had like two red rings over the eight nine years, whatever it's been of my console, me owning it, and they were both. I haven't had one in the last five years. I think that. PlayStation owners bashing the Xbox because of the whole red ring issues, like Cowboys fans saying the Cowboys are good because they won the Super Bowl in like 1990 or something. It's it's not an issue anymore. It's not like the red ring. The red rings. It, I'll admit when the red ring thing was an issue, it was happening a lot and it was screwing a lot of people over and it was a viable just uh, I guess point to say that we don't have this and they do. Like we don't have this issue and the other people do. But if you're still bring up Red Ring in the console war now, you are you're either a massive fanboy who cannot um, look at the actual real reasons why the PlayStation might be better, or you're just ignorant and you're an idiot because they don't it doesn't happen anymore. Like it okay, it happens sometimes to some people, but it's not it's not nearly the frequency it used to happen. And Microsoft more or less corrected that problem. I don't know anybody I know that has an Xbox Slim or any of the newer Xboxes that's ever had a Red Ring. My well, understanding yeah. is it only mainly clarify, happens with the old ones. You didn't just call him an idiot, did you? I think he did. No, no I, think he did, I did yeah. not. I did not because he I, he switched because of the red ring issue when the red ring issue was an actual issue. Well, that's when okay, I had but, my 360, dude. But the thing is, like, that's what I experienced from two different consoles in that time period when I was having those issues. And so uh, I was just, wait, I was tired yeah. of just waiting to get refurbished consoles and all that's, that kind of crap. That's fair. I, you so I, when I it was tried an a issue. new product. And to this day, I have my same PS3, and I've been more satisfied with this product. Haven't had any issues with it besides it being down from the PSN network. And that's just my opinion. And I'm a loyal follower now of Sony, man. So I can say I tried both sides of the of the field. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna stick to what I find, you know, more enjoyable, more playable, in my opinion. So. That is 100% fair. I'm referring to the people who say who say, I'm buying the PS4 because of the, instead of the Xbox One, and when you ask them why, they say, well, the Xbox 360 red rings all the time. And no, it doesn't. That's not true. It I still think it's anymore. a relevant conversation sure. topic because it shows that when they release a console, when it's their first generation console, and I'm not saying it's going to happen with the Xbox One, but in past experiences, their hardware manufacturing was not done well. And you have those experiences, so that I think that's going to reflect upon the company. And there's I, there's going to be a little hesitation with people that have had that experience in purchasing the Xbox One. So I do think it's still a relevant topic. In um, conversation. I'd, I'll tell you why I think it's a fair topic is because they're overclocking with the... Uh, oh, what is it? They're, over, they're overclocking one of their processors. It's either the RAM or the... Um, I think it's the RAM. They're overclocking RAM, which is going to increase the heat... And they're not changing the size of the box to let the heat out. So I think it's fair to say that Xbox had issues. I think it's also notable that when the Red Ring issues were happening, there was the most awesome customer service that you could see in a private industry in that they were fixed and repaired for free. They were shipped back and forth for free. And everyone who had a Red Ring uh, claim... Could could go through Microsoft and have their console made good again. Only if it's and, within that first year. Hell, it, 
because I, I had one. Yeah, it was my second the one. Thing is, and it was just the outside thing the is year. This, the one I never had one. I never had one of those, and I've only had slims, elite slims at that. Um, the from what I understand, it's only that box anyway, that yeah. original Xbox it anyway. Is. And so what they were say, what they said, and what wasn't completely true was that they fixed all of those. Those are all either fixed or gone. Mm. And so none of them ever should red ring again. And so I forget exactly why it was that they stopped. But they stopped. You got to put an end date on everything. And they still had a portion of people who did have red rings after that 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 did get. I mean, it was a bad product. It, that, uh, you're not going to hear me say that the original Xbox 360 was a piece of junk as far as the hardware spec product. It, yeah. it did. They did bad. But they tried to make it right, and they actually did a really good job of making it right. My assumption with the Xbox One is that I'm considering how often the red ring happened at first, and the fact that it was limited to only that console as opposed to the newer versions. I'm assuming it was happening for this, it, the same reason on almost all of the red rings. Like it was the same malfunction or the same thing. Like it's not like one mm -hmm. person red ring for this reason, one person red ring for this reason, one right. person did it for this reason. I'm assuming it was. 95% of the time, the same problem. So yeah. I'd like to think that they fixed that problem, and then now that they know what they... And you were talking about overclocking the RAM and overheating. I find it hard to believe that they would not realize that that was an issue and release the console. Like, they, I find it hard to believe they I say, don't. okay, we're, over, we're overclocking the RAM. They did it the, the first RAM. time. Yeah, but they've learned... I like to think they've learned from their mistakes as well. That's a nice I assumption find, that you're I, making there. You, you really think that Xbox, after the whole Red Ring issue, and how many people they lost from that, and how many, like, Mr. Punk Man is a perfect example. Red, Red Ring, whether you want to say directly or indirectly, and you can answer this question, Punk Man, because it was you. Whether it was direct or indirect, Red Ring more or less turned you from Xbox to PlayStation. I would say so, because I experienced it twice. So, right. I mean, the first time, yeah, you know, I thought maybe it just got a malfunction console. They replaced it, no big deal kept playing, and then it happened to me again. I was like, all right, I'm not going to do this. So, I, like I said, I took a break for six months, traded my stuff, and I gave a PS3 a, a chance, and you know, to and to me, it's a better console, and that's just my opinion, but going through that whole Red Thing time era, it actually kind of changed the way I felt about Microsoft and their products. And I mean, the games are great, but just the product itself, I didn't wasn't satisfied with it. Exactly, and that's my point, is that people... The, given the amount of people that they lost, like Punk Man, who switched or lost respect for Microsoft, or even if they stuck with Xbox 360, will not buy an Xbox One because they don't know if the hardware will be good, that leads me to believe that they would make sure that they get it right this time. And I would like to think that they wouldn't say, well, we're overclocking the RAM because we've got too much going on and the you know, Kinect's always on and everything. And that's that's going to cause the console to overheat and die out. Let's ship it out anyways. I, there, I, there's no way. Unless they, they're dumb enough to not realize that that's a problem, which it's which can, given that we know it's a problem, I highly doubt the people at Microsoft don't realize the problem. I don't know how they would do that and, and go through Red Ring Part 2 again. Here's how. Because it's a publicly owned company, and they have shareholders that they need to report to. So if there's shareholders saying, we need to get this console out because I want to make my money, then... Microsoft's got a deadline, and regardless of whether they're actually ready or not, they have a fully complete product. They've got that deadline, and they got demand from the top. They're going to do that, which is probably what happened with the 360. And, it, and again, I, I share your, your optimism as well, which is I, I want them to learn from their mistakes, and I want to have faith in the Xbox One product when it comes out and when I purchase it, but that's not to say that they won't make the same mistake twice because of the pressure from above. And it happens all the time in companies and business. I'd like to think that making sure your console can function for over the for more than a year would be one of your main priorities for making it. But yeah. I understand your point. Should be. And it should be. That's a fair it should be a fair assumption. Mm -hmm. All right. You're also not making fifty million dollars a year to put that product out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, that nice. matters. That does matter. It's not an yeah. insult by any means. It's mm -hmm. just saying that the guy up there at the top or that, that series of people up there at the top make a set of decisions that affect all of us mm -hmm. based on their their livelihood, their own longevity in the company, oh, and the consumer. 
And I'm just saying that that's a that's a that's a but, portion of the equation. That is well, a portion. Yeah. I know we I know we want to move on topics, but don't you think though that, that, that when they're making this console, and I understand you have to have a deadline, you have to do all this other stuff, but don't you think that making sure that first of all that at least that your product works is important for the sake of the product working and feeling like you made a good product, and then secondly that don't you think they can explain to people and say, well, if we put out a console and it it breaks for half of our our customers after, within the first year, they're not going to buy another one. They're going to switch. And don't you think that would make them want to make sure that it does not break? Like that's it. Yeah, I don't. I don't see how the investors or whoever who's funding this or the people at the top of the company think that something could be more important than that. Like I understand if it, the, the concept of them pushing some things that are not important over other things, but you, you're losing money though. You're lo if you if, pe yeah, if, no, if people if people you're losing potential customers. To agree with you, I know of the Red Ring even though I never had one. I know what overclocking does to a, a piece of technology. If I have technical issues, I will probably be leaving the, the Xbox arena, specifically because of your argument as you articulated well. Also, one last thing, and I'm dragging this out. But also, last last point on this though. Think of all the people. Think of all the people who watch YouTube who won't be getting a console till Christmas or maybe next summer or even beyond. Think of if if uh, if Woody's gamer tag buys an Xbox One, and his his red rings after two weeks. All and he he makes a video talking about how it red ringed after two weeks. All the people who were going to get an Xbox One for Christmas, boom, gone. They're going to PlayStation. That's yeah. You, that's, you 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 put a video out of. Woody's Gamertag, T. Martin, and White Boy 7th Street all doing a little PS4 handshake doodad thing, and Microsoft is over. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, those I are disagree. the three biggest gamers in YouTube. Do I? I? Well, it's not over, but it's... it's Yeah, it's not over. The, 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 oh, the quality man. of the, the, the product actually working and not breaking, I think you guys are underestimating how important that is to the company for not, not. for money reasons. <laughs> It's. Eh. I'm not I'm underestimating not. it, but when you're under pressure and you have those timetables, you're gonna miss things. It, mistakes do happen, and yeah. I, I agree with you in the point that I I want them to make that perfect console. I don't want it to break. I don't want to drop 500 bucks and get a stupid Red Ring of Death 2 on the Xbox One. But you know those things happen. But I I think how they respond to it is gonna is that's what's gonna influence. Like Wackman was saying, when they had the great customer service, you know, oh, we made a mistake. We're gonna have great customer service. Give us your consoles. We'll get it fixed. That helps redeem it. So you're gonna help keep that retention. And if you look at it this way, if they say we're gonna make a faulty product, we're gonna have awesome customer service to back it up. We're gonna get two purchases, two console purchases per consumer through the roof. Well, I don't think they get two purchases, but we can agree to disagree. But anyways. <laughs> We know what that sound means. You guys are brutal, man. I swear. Whew. <laughs> Needed. It's you a little fun. It's all in fun. It's all in fun. It's all in fun. I know, but it's like it's good to hear, though. It's good discussion. I mean, uh, if if we didn't disagree, like in the past, Oyster and I have looked for stuff to butt heads on, mm -hmm. just because it it is fun to hear. It's also fun to do, and <laughs> we're not going to hurt each other's feelings. Well, I don't that, have we, any just, we just turned console talk into about 57 minutes of the show. <laughs> if if we had agreed on everything that we were going to talk about, sucked. it would have been a max of 20 minutes. Disagreement fuels discussion. But now we have a new discussion, and Bonfire is going to tell us what it is. Well, at the end of this month, we're looking at kind of the last wave of gaming conventions for this summer. You got PAX Prime, and I know there, I think there's uh, Gamescom, and I think that's in Germany. So you got those coming up. And we're before we went on the show, we were kind of talking about, you know, which ones should the big gaming companies be aiming to, um, you know, go to, put out products, give announcements to, um, especially with, like, Call of Duty and some of the reveals and things like that. Um, so I think we we're going to start with that, if I'm not mistaken. Also, there's an eight-team MLG invite-only tournament at PAX Prime yep. for Call of Duty. And do you, what do you guys think about other like third-party people who aren't necessarily trying to promote a product being involved in 
whether it be entertainers or you know YouTube personalities or MLG or people like that trying to promote themselves at these things as well, even if they're not directly making a game or a gaming product. So it's it's a convention. I've I've been to uh, EMS conventions with work. And you have all kinds of stuff at a convention from like people who actually work with the product or, or the consumer mm -hmm. thereof. You got the people who um, don't have anything to do with medicine who maybe they offer a really cool flashlight and they're there because it's the best one that you can use in your job function. Um, there are people there uh, for education on how to better treat patients and there are, there is whatever... Uh, usually it's an educational type conference anyway, uh, but stuff that you could do back at your department after the con conference. Uh, there are also people there selling ambulances to whoever is a big wig enough to make purchasing decisions for their for their service. So in the conferences that I've been to, I have seen all of these multi-tiered, multi-different levels of um, everything from the worker to the CEO of the ambulance company I don't see any reason for that to be good, bad, or otherwise for the gaming industry. I just kind of accept yeah. that that's the way. If if you have anything to do with gaming, you you kind of do have a place at that at that conference. Yep, I agree. Cause I'm, I'm good with it. If if you look at it, it, what the gaming convention is and what what they're used for, it's networking. It's all about networking. It's for this game company to talk to this publisher and this controller company to talk to gamers and try to sell their products. So it's just a compilation of everyone just trying to network and further their business, if you will. So YouTubers being at gaming conventions, sure, I, I think it's great. I wish I could get out there more and you know do some vlogs and stuff at, at game you know Pax Prime and stuff coming up and. Just have fun with it, and just be a, be more a part of the industry. And if if you're a gaming YouTuber, then by all means, be a part of that industry and, and get yourself out there. I, I think it's a great thing. And please give us more than here's somebody else's gameplay of a map that you haven't seen yet that I don't actually have gameplay of my own for. But this is it. So please watch the next four uncommentated minutes. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, good one. Take a breather now. Take a breather. Do you guys think it's better for, like, for Xbox, for example? Xbox and PlayStation both revealed a new console at the singular, singular event, and I'm not trying to go back into console talk, but this is a good example. Mm -hmm. They both they revealed their consoles at a separate event, or do you think it would be better for a game company or developer or console developer to reveal whatever their product is at a convention as opposed to as a standalone event. Punkman, what do you think? Yeah, Punkman, what do you think? Actually, um, I don't think it's a bad idea, man, because I, I know at E3, that's when we first saw the PS4, and then the Xbox One was all the information. Personally, I think it just helps the industry, it helps the community get hyped up for the new, like, the new consoles, the new games, all that kind of stuff. So, to be honest... I think it's all good promotion, even though there might be bad publicity that comes with it. But I, 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 overall, I think of the competitions of like the COD, the MLG, uh, these different game, gaming conventions. It's all positive reinforcement for the gaming community, and it helps it grow overall. So I, personally, I don't mind having both reveals in one event, like at E3. I personally, I, I, I think. Ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think they, they, when you're doing a big console reveal like Microsoft and Sony did, they were smart in doing their own press conference and own events because they did it the Apple way. And I'm, I'm not going to get in some Apple fanboy talk or whatever, <clears throat> but what it Mac is is user. I am a Mac user and I am proud of it. But I wouldn't be. Here on 3Bar Exploits, we do not endorse the Apple brand or logo. Please continue. Wow. <laughs> In holding your own event, you have the spotlight all on yourself. You're not competing for that spotlight. So if you were to do the console reveals at E3, if both Sony and Microsoft did their console reveals at E3, they'd be battling for the spotlight. As what they did it by themselves, they're already in the spotlight. You get a week or two afterwards of just you. You're in the news lines. You're getting publicity, whether it's good or bad in both cases, but you're in the spotlight. Everyone, you're in the top of mind awareness for your consumers. So holding your own conference is a good thing. And they, they, they both did that well as far as having their own conference and then bringing 
some of those questions that were being asked afterwards after what they wanted to say to E3 and answering those. I, th I think they played both of those well. I, I don't, well, I don't yeah. like that you had a winner loser at E3, which is what you had. You had a winner loser. And you're going to say that I'm saying that because Microsoft was the clear loser. But we know you are, but go on. I just I don't like that there was a winner loser because this is not a winner loser thing for me. This is a which product is better comparison, not a winner loser because it, when you say loser, it it connotates that the product itself is inferior, uh, and, and that's fair. That is actually fair. The product, this product, is inferior to that one to me which is a subjective measurement, for these reasons. But what you see at these conferences is not that ability to have an objective measurement. It is a marketing scheme and marketing campaign. You don't know yet which one is, and oh my gosh, I'm going to give a shout out to those like 5 million people who aggravatingly mm. put it at the bottom, it's not out yet, you really shouldn't judge until it comes out. You're right, and some, for the most part, the best time to figure out when you want to, fit, to to buy one of these consoles is when you can go to Best Buy and put your hands on both of them. That's right. Please go to Best Buy. Please do. I support Best Buy. I feel like it has. To, I feel like winner loser is completely fair because the objective of both companies is to have the most sales possible. And if you decide that you're buying one console over the other, the console that lost that per potential purchase from you lost the battle over that way. These over that one person, they lost the battle. There was a winner and there was a loser in the eyes in the eyes of the because if I'm if I'm Sony and I and you know Bonfire decides he's buying a PlayStation Seven Xbox. Then I just won. I just beat Microsoft because I got that sale and they didn't. Because you lied. You're but a liar. Oh my god! Lied about Not the this whole again. No. You're just full of crap. You say, "Oh, you just give them the game and they play the game." No, that's if not how it works. If Alex Rodriguez hits a walk-off home run, marketing. If marketing Alex you, Rodriguez hits a home won. run, if Alex Rodriguez hits a game-winning home run at the bottom of the ninth <laughs> inning for the Yankees while he's juiced up, does that mean the Yankees didn't win the game? No, it doesn't. The Yankees still won the game. Oh, they're taking the college football. They just take the freaking games away. And they, what did they or, do hey, hey, guys, hey. Or it could be like soccer, Oyster's favorite sport, and there's a tie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my favorite sport, but I don't have a problem with there being ties. It's, I do, but for cons <laughs> the whole thing with console wars, I hate from a consumer standpoint, I absolutely hate it. hate declaring a winner or loser from a consumer standpoint because me as a gamer... I want as many games and as many consoles as possible because I love them all. Same I here. ain't no I, fanboy. I agree, but in the eyes, in the but, eyes hey, of whoa, Sony hey, and Microsoft, they win or lose. What is this? What is this? That was me pointing at both of you. Texas? Actually, I'm I'm below you on my stream. So. Well, there we go. So if I reach up, you have to giggle. <laughs> <laughs> but from a business standpoint, I do think there should be a winner loser because you're looking at numbers. But That's from a right. consumer standpoint, why why can't we just accept that both consoles are going to be great? We're going to get they're going to compete. They're going to go head to head. We're going to get a lot of great games. We're going to get a lot of great features, and it's going to be a win for us gamers. And why Did can't you just I agree? It? I'm just speaking from just the embrace it. Standpoint. Embrace the games more than Call of Duty. That's all I'm asking. And well, how asking Ned, did, did anybody did anybody get a timestamp on the Rage Tastic? event that just happened. It was within the last two minutes, so okay. 3.32. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just saying that that's a, not a viable... Oh, and, bon and Bonfire, by the way, just throw, so we can just put an end to the whole COD fanboy discussion involving myself. Uh, if it weren't for being able to play Dead Rising, Titanfall, and Halo on Xbox, there's a real possibility I'd be on the PlayStation. So I can but play Call of Duty on either one. Titanfall will eventually go to PS4, dude. But if, if it if it takes an if it takes a year for it to go to PS4, then that's a year I can't play it while I'm on the I'm PlayStation Four. Totally, I mean, personally, the only games I care about is Ghost, Battlefield Four, the new Metal Gear Solid game, um, as well as King of Hearts, dude. So I mean, personally, those are the games I'm stuck for. But I didn't hear you I, say Sunset Overdrive. He's yeah. getting a PlayStation. I will come back to you on that. Please continue. But that's an exclusive to Xbox One, right? 
Yeah. Yes. That's the reason that you're choosing an inferior product, but please continue. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you're like, why overall, I don't deserve to be lumped in with this guy in the fanboy <laughs> comment, but anyways. I just think overall, it's all going to help the community grow. It's going to help bring news to the consoles, the games, and it, like, like Bonfire said, I want to see the best consoles available. I want to see the best games available over time, and all this, regardless of all the fighting and the dis- disagreeing, it helps the community come into the spotlight, in my opinion. I like this guy. Yeah. I like him. <laughs> it's I like him. You know, I just realized is that I've got Oyster up here, and so obviously I'm I'm down on the right. He's up on the he's up on the left. I'm I'm down on the right, and then above me and to my side are both PlayStation people. So we x off pretty good. <laughs> You guys are just on a straight line for me. I just have you all lined up. Well, that's, he's on X split, like in the. Yeah. I'm got, I'm, I'm working it. I'm, I'm, and I'm gonna get a better layout. This was just something I threw together. I will fix this. I promise. We um. Yeah. I don't know. I think the whole winner loser thing is valid for the for the developers, at least. Random question I, time. Yeah. <gasps> Yay! Sure. You're not gonna be that excited. It, it, Aww. Let's see. Let's just hear it. Bring it out. Hang on. Let me write this timestamp down. Time stamp. If if you were a woman, what kind of man would you want? Oh God. Oh my God, really? <laughs> really? I can't. Tongue man took it. He's like, hmm, hold on, I need to think about this. I already have an answer. I have nothing against. You start his answer. There we go. I have, I have nothing against homosexual people, but I can't answer this question without feeling a bit homosexual. If I was a woman, just so I don't know. Feel bonfire because y'all are on the same level up there. I'm I'm way down here. If you I, I, go ahead. Go ahead, dude. No, no, I'm done. I'm, 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 I was just saying, like, you, you got the answer. Ever since I was a kid, I used to be a big fan of Rock. You know, I was like, I, he's like my man crush. I'm sorry. Like, I used to love wrestling. The Rock, the guy, yeah. He's so beastly, dude. So if yeah, I was a woman, that would be the, my guy. So, the, the Rock Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson. Have you seen him lately? He's by huge, the way? man. He's Are you kidding humongous. me? Dude. Jeez. His neck His comes over to his elbow. than my waist. Seriously, but yeah, t- that'd be my answer, man. Wow. For me, I'd go for a guy like me. <laughs> Charming, <laughs> good looking. A That's a cheater answer. Gamer, lover. Whackman <laughs> 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 uh, hmm. needs to answer because he actually is his question. Clean cut. What about you, Oyster? We'll answer after I, you. Yeah. I can't. I don't know, dude. I can't. Clean answer. cut. Good job. Very responsible. All the things that I wish I was. Oh yeah, I guess hey, I'd have pretty to clean say, cut. Look at I'd that goatee. To, it's clean. I'd have to. Yeah, say, but I want it down to here, dude. I, I, if I could do it for work, it would be down to where I could <sighs> braid it into my shoes. So where, it'd just be flowing in the weight, huh? Yeah. You just split it in the side and let it go. Oh, yeah, I awesome. shave once a week. Do you guys do that, or you shave like every day? Um, every, once a week ish. Every Same two way. to three, depending on what. Work schedule, length of hair growth, what time of day the previous shave was. I hate shaving so much. Oyster, Same do you way. have that problem? Do you hate shaving? Um, it, yeah, <laughs> it's it's not an everyday thing, but it's not it's it's not it's not never happened. So. Don't worry, my bro. Fist bump, dude. You don't have to shave every single day. It's it's okay. okay. I don't. I've never okay. shaved every single day. I I did in high school. I get um. <laughs> Well, I'm only a freshman. Well, I just, I'll be a sophomore now. So, but anyways. Yeah. Anyways. If yeah. you haven't noticed, I, I actually have problems growing hair. So. Yeah. <laughs> this is not if a I, wig. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to uh, answer the question, I guess I'd say someone who was responsible and, like, not not someone, like, I have this, this view of life where it's like, I don't want to go through life just being an irrelevant, just, like, I want to feel like I did something worthwhile and I affected the lives of other people with my life. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to work at, you know, a restaurant and be a waiter and then end up, you know, when I'm 45 years old, I just go work at, like, Walmart or something and, like, and, like, and just live life just paycheck to paycheck my entire life and just not really do anything significant in the world. And some people's, like, definition of significant is different than others. Like, WACMED is doing something significant with his job because he's helping save people's lives. 
So at least I so you know some people may say it has to be you have to be famous for it to be a significant thing, but you know there's other people that have different definitions. So I'd want to pick someone who was on that kind of track, like not someone who was just like just living paycheck to paycheck and didn't have a good job. Like I want someone who was responsible and had a good job and had like a definition of where they wanted to go in life. If that makes sense, that'd be my number one factor answering the question. So. I can't go into the whole looks thing and everything because well, yeah, like, what about like hair color? bonfire and then <laughs> like with all with all due respect to punk man, if I were in high school, I would not want to date a guy with green. What was the spikes? You what did what you call them? <laughs> Liberty spikes. Liberty spikes. Liberty I could not go for the Liberty spikes guy. No, I have know. seen. I I think that the problem I have with Liberty Spikes is what the person underneath them is wearing because I have seen oh, yeah. some people with some outrageous dues and and Liberty Spikes and dreads and everything, and I look at the hair and for some reason for me that's immediately like a hey, that's cool or a that's not done well or a I really think they should wash it, but it's what's underneath that like. If you're if you look like a hardware store between your chin and your eye, or even above that, you between your chin and your Liberty spikes, not so cool. Not, I mean, just not for me. Maybe it's for you. It's just not for me. Um, and and you know, if if it looks like you really could use a washing of your clothes along with your hair, I don't. Or actually, I should say, if if it looks like your clothes are terrible, you got a hardware store going on in this area, or you could ring out your arms and fill a HP printer, then it doesn't matter how cool your Liberty Spikes are or how cool your mohawk or really weird hair design is, you just don't look like an interesting enough person for me to sit down with. But, like, Liberty Spikes and and something else that matches it but looks good, look, looks well done under as, as a person as a whole... Then it's like, hey, you know what? What's, what sounds like fun is to sit down and buy that person a cup of coffee and say, in an hour, tell me what it is that makes you get dressed like this every day. Because that would be cool. I've I don't think I'd want to have a cup of coffee with that person. No, I just, I, I agree. You don't want to share a bowl of ice cream with them. They'll stab you in the eye. You'll be. <laughs> I don't want to share anything with that. Mr. Punkman, since your name is Mr. Punkman and you did sport the Liberty Spikes. Were you one of those people who, in high school, who like protested everything and was anti-establishment on life in general? And you, you, you're proud of your Liberty Spikes because it made you against the man. Were you I one of those so, people? Yeah, it was uh, out of the okay. norm. The kids I hung out with, you know, we were all like the same. We were just trying to be. The whole foundation of it is just the music, man. Like, okay. I to this day, I you know, I'm well, I'm 26 now, so I don't dress that way anymore. I have a wife, I have a house, so I'm, I have responsibilities. But when it comes to the music, that's the whole foundation of it. It's just the being out of the norm. Like the music I listen to, you cannot hear on the radio. You cannot. You can go to a concert for twenty-five bucks, see four bands play, and have the best time of your life because that was to me that was fun. Besides playing video games, so the kids I hung out with, the bands I played in, it was all about the music. And overall, like I guess you could say we wanted to fit the image of being like the punk rocker kind of thing, dude. Yeah, so. that that that's fair then. That's actually good. Yeah. You that's weren't punk dude. to be. You weren't punk to be anti the man as much as you were punk because you liked punk music and like the punk. Lifestyle. Yeah, I, I didn't wear like anarchy, you know, patches yeah. on me or nothing. I just I just loved a few certain bands, dude. So. so what dude. bands do you, What bands do you like? Or what are these Currently, bands? right now. Well, yeah, sure. Right now. Uh, I like No Effects. Um, actually, I have a shirt on right now. Casualties, check them out. They're pretty good. Uh, anti flag. It's a bunch of anti, um, like bad religion. TSOL. These are all bands that you guys probably never, never even heard of, right? I've heard, I've heard of bad religion. Bad religion. Bad religion. Well, yeah, bad religion is like you know, one well, of Godfather's punk rock, hardcore punk rock music. So. They've been around so long. Um, like No Effects has been around for thirty years. Mm-hmm. And I like. Um, Jeez, I like some ska music too, like Mustard Plug. I like uh, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, Street Dogs. You're, you're going deep down to the punk catalog at this point. Well, dude, I'm just telling you, that's I love that kind of music, dude. So my iPod, you'll find music that you probably have never heard of before, like you know Minor Threat. You guys ever heard of them? I don't think Ooh. so. It rings Minor a bell, threat. but I can't say that I have. Like Bad yeah. Brains, but that's just yeah, my kind of music, dude. So I mean, that's the that's the stuff I'm into. So. There you go. <laughs> I'm just so I think, I, I, I think yeah. my name suits myself. So. 
you know, you kept mentioning the music, so I'm like, okay, what does he actually listen to? And now I know. Yeah. So. Music is very important. I think that so. makes four for four of music people on the show then, actually. But the thing is, like, you know, I knew, you guys talked about football earlier, mm-hmm. you know. I just never was into sports, so I could – my friends are the same way, so we could all group together and unite to music, and that's the reason why I think we were so passionate about it, and that's why we played in band. Well, it's understandable. There are no sports in your part of the country. And you don't have to say where you're well, from. You I'm to, just saying there's well, nothing he, there. Well, I know the Cardinals are horrible, dude. I'm not going to deny that. I keep hearing that. He's got the Cardinals. That. He's got the Suns. He's got Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks. Well, I got I got kids at my high school, too, that also can't play. I mean, if, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Oh, thanks, Whack Man, dude. Jeez. And now I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. getting the shrapnel now, dude. Seriously? Yeah, shrapnel. <laughs> yeah, this is, you stand close enough to the your, your grenade, you're going to feel the concussion. I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, no, but I mean, you're as bad as I am as far as location and pro teams that are worth anything. No, no, <laughs> he's not. Who got the Jaguars? Um, no, I no, the it, Devil no. Rave. If it depends, it depends what part. And I, he probably doesn't want to answer this. He probably doesn't want to give away his location. But he, he's in Arizona. As if those of you didn't pick up, because we named all three sports teams from Arizona. So right. if you didn't pick that up anyways, then we're just gonna say it. And you need to watch some more sports if you didn't pick that up. But it depends if he's close, because I think the Diamondbacks, I think all three of those teams are in Phoenix, aren't they? Phoenix. So yeah, it depends Phoenix. if you're close to Phoenix or not, because like WACMED, you have you have two basketball teams, two football teams, and everything in your state, but you're not near any of them. So it depends, if he's, yeah. it depends if he's near those teams or not. I'm like, I'm about 45 minutes from Phoenix, dude, where I See, live. See, so he, but he's, yeah. he's close enough to go to a game on Sundays and stuff without it being a huge, like, endeavor. I can, I can see a local team lose from my house. You've got the Miami Heat. They've won two straight NBA championships. They're not local, dude. That's another state. That that's like that's North Cuba. We don't even claim them. Nobody cares about <laughs> it's the North Heat. Cuba. Nobody cares about the Heat. I'm a Bobcats fan, so. Dude, can you guys hold on a second? I'm gonna grab a picture real fast, real quick. Hold on a second. All right. Oh God, is it gonna be a Liberty Spikes picture? I hope it is. I hope it's a picture of him. That would be Liberty awesome. Spikes. That I would hope be so. awesome. That'd be cool. But I can I can kind of relate to what he was saying as far as like not really being huge into sports because I didn't play sports in high school like my physical activity like I was a skater like I skateboarded with my friends all the time that's what we did in my close group granted we had a couple people that did like track and cross country and stuff but I didn't do that um, and I, it was sports and music or I mean skateboarding and music excuse me that that's what I did so I'm I a played huge in bands sports, and, I'm a huge sports fan I have a problem yeah. with my feet though where I can't like. Like, I can't run or walk very easily because, like, because the bones in the bottom of my feet are, like, aligned improperly. So it makes, like, I basically suck at most sports just because I can't, like, yeah. do them right, if that makes sense, I guess. If yeah. that makes any sense. Like, I, so I enjoy watching sports a lot, but I'm not, I don't play a ton of sports. Yeah, I, do, I do, like, I kind of I kind of like outdoor stuff and stuff. Like, I like going mountain biking and stuff like that. But. Hey, well, yeah. I, mean, do you, I don't yeah, think yeah. I can see this, but you see the guy... The lead singer, see his hair. Oh, is that you? No, nah, it's not nice. me. That's one of the bands I was at. That's those are Liberty Spikes, dude. So, and then, cool. We were hoping you That's were going to picture you and the Liberty Spikes is what we were. Yeah, we want to see the Liberties. Give me a second here. I really please. I only recently Liberty started like actually playing sports as far as like. You're in that male active. softball league, man. That's yeah. what I said. This is uh, I think I was 15. It's fun, here, man. But uh. You can see my like grass green hair. Nice. Ooh. It's all goatee, dude. But I had that for about Ooh. four months. So. But, and I then mean, you went to the full on Liberty Spikes and the same. Yeah, thing. I grew my hair out, dude. But I mean, my mom dyed my hair like that, and. Best hairline on YouTube. Fight with me about it. Best hairline on YouTube. But yeah, I mean, that's just that's the kids I hung out with, dude. And the music we stood we stood behind. So. I think you guys appreciate that. We did. That was good. That's pretty good. I had I had lots of hair when I was younger. As a joke, I um, decided to shave off my head and then told my wife she was leaving to go to the fair. I had to go to work that night. So shaved my head down with the clippers, just buzzed it down. I've always kept it pretty short like a like a bonfire do up here, but um, so I had it nice and short and I was like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So I Got a razor out in the shower, and I you went to, it? to yeah, went straight down to the skin. I've never uh-huh. ever been able to grow hair since. 
It's like my hair said, you want to pick on your wife? You just want to go bald without 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 telling your wife that that's what you're going to do? We'll show you, buddy, bald forever. So you literally can't grow hair now. Like it's not like you just you grow a little bit and then you shave it, but you just it just it won't grow basically. Um it it's it grows slower than my than my beard and my mustache hair, and what does grow has such a horrible line, like it it's scooped way. Like I won't be able to hear you now, but it's scooped way back here, and then there's a bald spot up here. So basically, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's forced. It's forced you to get bald or stay bald. It's it's forced me to stay bald because I tried to grow it back one time. I was told that I. I, and I wore my glasses, and I had a family member tell me I looked like a child molester, so that's not not what you want to hear from anyone. <laughs> Thanks, family member. Thank you, family member. Hey, at least they hey, kept you from going conference. out in the world looking like a child molester. What you got? What you got? It's just a picture of me and my band. We were playing back in uh, high school, dude. But, I mean, that's, you know, me and my friends, that's all we did was play music. And Is that a bass in your hands? What'd you play? Yeah, yeah. I play bass, dude. Yeah! So, so. I'm a man. play a bass. What kind of Ibanez? Slap the boost. That's, yeah. that's an Ibanez bass right there, dude. So, Ooh, nice. so what's what's Bonfire's musical involvement? Because I know you brought up being something in music, doing something in music before, but I don't mm-hmm. remember what it was exactly. Well, I've I was a band geek. I've been a, I did band in high school. I played the saxophone. It wasn't eh, it kind of just happened that way. But um, in high school, though, I also learned to play the guitar, bass, which those go hand in hand, I think. Yeah. Um, as well as my, my main instrument outside of the saxophone was drums. Nice. So I played drums. I pretty much taught myself how to play drums and played in a band like my senior year of high school and the year after that and then kind of left for college. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I missed it. Short version drums? Yeah, basically. I played the saxophone. Played saxophone and, I, and drums in high school. <sighs> Dude, the saxophone was one of the I wish I could play the saxophone. I don't know. I think it's a cool instrument to listen to. Did you get all the ladies, dude, from playing the saxophone? No. Yeah. <laughs> the bass players don't get the ladies either, so... <laughs> Whatever. <Yeah. laughs> My skateboard helped me get the ladies. That's what it was. Nice. <laughs> really? No. I've seen some. Oh. I've seen some skater ladies, and I don't know that I'd want any of them. Yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't, actually, know, I don't I know do which coast, that... though, that may work, though, because they're all into that hippie stuff, like skating. Whoa. Skateboarding so what hippie I do thing? is I take my skateboard and I just bash her over the head with it. That's called a donkey punch. <laughs> no, that is not what that is. <laughs> I know what the definition of that is, and that uh, is not, my friend, what that is. Uh, oh, wow, so we're going to skip over the Call of Duty multiplayer and uh, the gun repeats, and uh, yeah. I don't remember what else it was that we teased earlier. We were going to talk about time... Envy a little bit. But... Envy, yeah. Uh, so it is time for us to wrap up this segment. If you want us to try to hit on those, if they're still relevant next week, leave a comment down below, and we'll see if we can't get back to them. We do want to thank Mr. Punkman for coming on. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for inviting me. It was fun. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So make sure you, you go check guest. out. Make sure you go check out his channel. He, he He's... He, I think he's actually a little intimidated at the ferocity of the interchange between us, so we have to see about bringing him back one time when he understands the rules about not getting <laughs> bit. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, I could take. Trust me, I, I have a pretty thick skin, so I could take it. So, so, it's all so that's gonna on. that's gonna wrap up episode eleven for us. Please uh, remember to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe down below. Check out Strictly Business Gaming. Thanks. Have a great day. See you guys.